Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, the spirit of Bermuda. Today on Golf Destination, we sit down and talk to Matt Parziali, the Brockton firefighter who teed it up at the 2018 Masters. Plus, we hear from Bernhard Langer on his thoughts about winning the Masters. We'll visit the old course at Broken Sound in Boca Raton, Florida, and we'll meet the newly named Director of Instruction at TPC Boston, Sean Hester. All of that and more next. Hello and welcome to Golf Destination. I'm your host, Meredith Borman. 2018 was a special year for Matt Parziali. The then firefighter qualified to play in the Masters and the US Open after winning the United States Mid-Amateur. We sat down with Matt at his home club, Thorny Lee Golf Club, to discuss his experience at Augusta National during tournament week. Looking back at playing the Masters in the spring of 2018, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had as a golfer. Competing there and being a part of that week and I'll never forget those moments. Masters week starts on Saturday before the tournament, so a couple extra days before the fans get there. So Saturday, Sunday, you had the course, you had the access, and um, I played with some members on Saturday and then some participants that were also playing in the event on Sunday. The clubhouse is, it looks small from the outside and you get in and there's just all these levels of locker rooms on one, the pro shops in there, they have the crow's nest where we stayed, um, and then there's a lot of administration there, more than you'd see, you'd think was in there from the outside. And that being said, it's just there's so much history. There's pictures everywhere. There's clubs that people use during the Masters and, and that kind of stuff. I got to see the Champions Locker Room, which is pretty cool to see. That was my first visit, and it's kind of blocked off week of the Masters, but that was back in November when I saw it. So to be able to see all that and see where it started from and pictures from when it used to be a a flower nursery, and uh, so it's pretty pretty cool to see. The amateur dinner on Monday night, um, it was great. It was a room full of people from the USGA, Augusta members, and people from the RNA, and then us six amateurs. And then uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick was a speaker, so he was uh, he was the only other contestant in the room. And just to see everyone's face, so excited to be a part of that night. Who. They get to do this every year, and we get to do it maybe once, hopefully hopefully more in the future. But um, yeah, it was a great night, and uh, just the whole whole show they put on for us, it was not, not, unlike anything I've ever seen. Every meal we had on property was just some of the best we've ever had. But the uh, presentation was really cool, where they did a thing of the six of us who were there, how we got there. So you had videos of myself, during the U.S. Mid-Am and they talk about that and Jim Nance narrated it and they did it for all six of us so it's cool to see the other five as well as, as yourself and your path to get to Augusta. I stayed in the crow's nest one night and that was Monday night after the amateur dinner so we go upstairs and the national championship game was on for, for the uh, NCAA tournament and so we all watched that and we went to bed fairly early and it was, it was one room with just like cubicles of beds and I couldn't believe how cold it was. So in the morning, I actually went down to the locker room to take a shower because it was a little too cold in the room to, uh, to shower up there. So it's kind of like sleeping in the fire station, just a much nicer one. Matt returns later to speak more about his experience during Masters Week. Thorny Lee Golf Club in Brockton, Massachusetts has a unique connection to the Masters. Hall of Fame golf writer Herbert Warren Wind, who coined the phrase Amen Corner, grew up on the course and he and his best buddy and fellow member visited the Masters Tournament 49 consecutive years together. I went down with Donnie Doyle, who was a great friend of mine. He was a nice golfer. Uh, we drove down to Augusta, it took us three days then. It was something in those days. On the Thursday and Friday, there were only 1,500 people on the course. Pretty classy people on their way home from wintering in Florida. We began doing that every year. We went 50 in a row. 50 he, in a row. He only went 49. Jack Lane and I went to the last one together. Jones had a bungalow on the tenth, off the 10th tee. There were three or four bungalows. And uh, 
they used to invite the writers over. But you had to be a, a friend of Bobby or else he, he had read some of your stuff and he wanted to see you. So <coughs> Herb used to get to see him. They used to tell you when you, when you, when you could report, sort of. And Herb used to go there once a year and look forward to it so much, you know. He could, it was terrific. Robert Tyre Jones. I used to go up to see him the day, the morning before the Masters. More and more people would join us going up the hill to Bob Jones. He knew everyone's name of writers who he barely met. Uh, he was in terrible shape. He was in great form. He had whatever great people have that enable them to do things that they shouldn't be able to do. Just being in his company was something. I'm not kidding. When you were finished there after staying 45 minutes or so, you would begin to walk back towards the clubhouse. You wouldn't say a word. You were just trying to adjust to being with Jones. And you'd walk maybe 200 yards without saying a word, and all of a sudden you stop and you both say, how does he do it? The impact in you is great. Nothing like that is, can't remember anything like that. He was a wonderful man. He wrote good letters. He um, was a good friend. Seeing Bobby Jones play. He played the first or second year I was there. And that's the only year he played. Just seeing him, I think, was quite a, quite a thing. Both Herbert and Don have passed away, but the legend of their friendship will endure forever. Next, Matt Parziali returns to talk about playing Augusta during tournament week, and Bernhard Longer lends his thoughts on what it means to win at the Masters. Welcome back, I'm Meredith Gorman. Matt Parziali returns to discuss playing at the Masters. Augusta National is obviously a spectacular place, difficult, best condition you ever play. But for me, it changed so much on Wednesday night coming into Thursday morning. Um, it really firmed up, the greens were even faster, and it just played that much more difficult in a tournament round that didn't practice rounds. Not that it's not hard in a practice round, but you can kind of find your way around, and um, even when you hit a bad shot, you're not in that bad of a spot. But come Thursday morning, all that's out the window, and you really have to be precise with every shot in the bag, and that's, that's what I tell everyone. You can hit the shot, but you have to hit a really good shot every single time. You can't get away with much out there. The first tee shot of the Masters last year was my biggest unknown going into the event. That being said, I put a lot of work in to be prepared for that moment, and that's probably the coolest moment that I look back on at Augusta, is that I was ready for that shot like it was the first shot of the State Amp here or the club championship at Thorny Lake. I couldn't find the club face on the, uh, on the range, and um, Sean, my coach was standing behind me, he probably wanted to say a million things, he didn't say anything, and then the first he shot, I, I hit a good one, so um, we're off and running. The seventh hole gave me the most trouble that week. That being said, is it the most difficult? Maybe not, but I hit one tee shot right, I hit one tee shot left, and I'm making double both days, and really didn't give myself a chance to play the hole correctly. Um, that's a demanding shot for both the tee shot and, and approach shot, but then, then you look at 11, and I just played that a little better that week, but that's probably more of a difficult hole than, say, seven is. So my favorite hole at Augusta, I'd have to say, is 13 because I was able to eagle that. And not only, not only the eagle, but to play the last nine holes uh, pretty well after playing the first 27 poorly. It was just a good way for me to finish. I felt good coming in. Had birdie opportunities every single hole. Um, even had another eagle opportunity on 15, and I gave it a little too much and missed the putt coming back. But um, yeah, that was probably the best hole I played that, that week. I didn't realize that we got crystal for Eagles, and as the Eagle putt went in, Mike Weir had said, something crystal, and I kind of mis misheard him. And then we're walking off the green, and Brendan Seal tapped me on the back, because you can get some nice crystal for that. So the next three holes, they both explained to me what I actually got for, for making Eagle. And then on 15, that's why I charged the first putt to try to get some more crystal. So uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way it did on 13. Yeah, I think, I think another chance around there, you're going to have the knowledge a little bit more. Not so much that I'm able to go every year like these guys, but a, a little more preparation for Thursday morning rather than n the unknown of Thursday morning. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in 
experience and learning from experiences, even the bad ones, uh, trying to move forward. So um, I say that now, but I could play poor. I could play worse next time. So, um, but I'll be I'll be a little bit more prepared. Matt's eagle and the winning of Crystal is impressive, but can you imagine what Jack Nicklaus's kitchen cabinet looks like? Jack leads all players with 25 eagles during the Masters Tournament. That's a lot of glassware. Bernhard Langer continues to dominate in the golfing world on the PGA Tour Champions, and he also had a great showing at the age of 60 in the 2018 Masters. We spoke to this past winner on what it means to win the Masters. It's wonderful uh, to have won uh, the U.S. Masters at Augusta and to go back there every year is just a dream come true. To play on one of the best courses in the world, to be a part of the past Champions Dinner, so that this big table with all the legends of the game, uh, it's very unique and very special. They have a lot of wonderful traditions uh, and to me it's probably the best manicure golf course in the whole world. Coming up, we visit the course where Bernhard Langer won the Oasis Championship the old course at Broken Sound in Boca Raton, Florida, when Golf Destination continues. Recently, we spoke with the director of golf, Jeff Weber, about the golf course that yearly hosts the world's best golfers over the age of 50. The old course is phenomenal. It's been here 1978. Last year was our 40th anniversary. Um, really enjoyed seeing how it designed itself from uh, Joe Lee, Back in time, where it was a North Carolina style golf course, purely wooded pine trees and oak trees, to 2004 when uh, Gene Bates came in and redesigned it, took a lot of the trees out, put a lot of elevated greens, and kind of gave it that northern North Carolina style setup. Here at the old course, it really requires a lot of short game uh, precision. Every green is kind of a push up. Uh, elevated style with bunkering and a lot of trouble around that side. Uh, most holes and, and, and areas out here you can kind of hit it around and still find it, but if you struggle inside 50, 60 yards you're going to pay the price. You can hit it around, but the main key is if you can figure out the greens, you, you, can, you can do okay. Kyle and Shannon, our superintendents, uh, get them very smooth to, a, to a, a speed where they're almost unreadable. They're very flat, very subtle breaks, but the fact is if the wind blows a titch in February like it has been in the past few years, the balls can kind of move in different directions if you hit the putt three or four times. Our front nine is routed identical uh, for members as it is for Champions Tour play that week. So once you turn around to the back nine, it kind of gets it into a nice finish where typically our members play what we call a 5-4-5 five, five finish, par 5, par 4, par 5 finish, whereas Champions Tour puts that par five and relocates it earlier in the round so you can kind of get a good lick at a birdie on tournament 11, which is actually our tournament 18. And then once you turn to the back nine, we call it um, Alligator Alley, where you get to this par three where it's a 210 yard par three uphill, bogey is a good score. Then you get to uh, tournament 15, Island Green, par is a good score. And then you finish with a par three, par four, par five finish, which is kind of a nice way to go. Favorite hole in the front for me is number nine. Number nine is, is a 437 par four, kind of predominantly into an easterly wind. Um, we've seen a lot of train wrecks with my membership as well as with the PGA Tour champions. I've seen guys like our, like our members do waffle it into the out of bounds and they re tee it and there's water left. Uh, back nine, I'd say tournament uh, 15, which is our member 13. Tremendously difficult. Uh, from the back tee, it's about 440 yards, again, facing directly back to the easterly breeze. You don't see any water off the tee. Once you get to the fairway, you're hit, staring at a 180-yard shot over to an island green. Our clubhouse is very simple. Whenever I show to players and to guests, it's, it's a golf shop, a couple of locker rooms, and a beautiful dining facility, and that's it. There's no extra fluff. It's just, let's go play golf, and if you want to have a a beer or a sandwich at the turn, you can do that here. So it's very laid back lifestyle. The patio is phenomenal because it faces uh, north and you get to check out the whole entire golf course as you're having your beverage of choice or, or a meal after the round. Broken Sound's old and new course are internationally known as some of the best conditioned and environmentally conscious courses in the world. Let's learn how they do it. The old course here at Broken Sound, it's a, a great venue for the tournament. It uh, stretches out about 6,900. We can get it close to 7,000 yards. Uh, has three acres of Tiff Eagle greens, uh, 120,000 square feet of bunkers. 
and the variety on the fairways and rough is Celebration Bermuda Grass and the tees are Piss Palum, Sea Isle 1 Piss Palum. The bunkers are, are in very good places. We don't have a lot of bunkers, but where they are, they're in, they're in very strategic spots that often if you hit an errant shot that it catches them. Um, for example, coming down 18, some of the bunkers you really can't see off the tee that if you hit it long enough that you can have a tendency of getting in. Uh, Gene Bates is the architect that did the renovation with us. Uh, his bunkers are very flat going into them and, and slope up towards the greens or out of the fairways so that if you get into them you normally have to hit a higher shot so they're a little more penalizing than, than most. The setup leading up to the week of the tournament's what gets my guys and us tired. The week of the tournament's actually pretty fun for us. We tried to have everything set up ready to go mid-October, early November. My season's October through April, so that's my busy time. That's my time to shine for membership. Um, luckily for us, the tournament falls right smack dab in the middle of that, so that's what makes the tournament set up, I think, the easiest for us at the old course. But um, yeah, get through through season every year, then that's a, we love summertime. We get to tear it up air fight. We do three core airifications, rough tees, fairways, approaches, greens get seven, so summertime, everybody we're here working. Tournament usually wants like 11 and a half, 12. So our greens that we have are go pushing, I think 16 years old this year. Uh, to get that speed takes a lot. So we start prepping late December to get to what we need for that. Leading up to that, we don't want to push them too hard going in because you never know what kind of weather we're going to get either. So it could be wet and cold or it could be like last year, it was 75 almost the whole week of the tournament. So. It's, you go, go by day by day pretty much. We won the Environmental Leaders in Golf Award in 2016. Uh, we're up for the award again, Greenest Club in America. So we're the leaders in sustainability. We have 24 beehives on property. Uh, we produce about 3,000 pounds of treatment-free or organic honey a year. Uh, we give all the, the honey to our members. We also have bat houses on property to help with mosquitoes. We have uh, 1,200 bird houses. We have uh, butterfly gardens, 13 acres of butterfly gardens. We have uh, a 53-foot in-vessel digester. So we recycle 96% of everything on property. Everything that comes out of the restaurant goes through the digester. Everything we trim on the golf course uh, goes through the digester. We make all of our own compost and we put it all back onto the golf course. So we recycle 96% of everything on property. We're second in the state in recycling uh, next to waste management. They do it for a living, so it's a little hard for me to keep up with them. But uh, you know, we, we thrive ourselves in the advancement of, of everything that we can do on the golf course to, to be sustainable. Uh, we set our thresholds much higher than most or typical clubs in, in fungicide applications or herbicide applications. We do a lot of hand pulling of weeds and, and physical removal. Um, we manage our lakes instead of treating our lakes, so it's, uh, it's a very unique club as a whole on everything that we do here. And, and it takes a, a staff, very dedicated staff because it's easy to not do the right things. We started out with removing styrofoam cups from golf carts to going to corn-based cups, literally. Then we had the problem with the corn-based cups actually from the humidity in Florida would start melting and then people's drinks would end up all over their feet in the golf cart. So he came up with the idea of, of basically a koozie that we screwed a koozie into the golf cart to set the cups in, would keep them there long enough. So basically the only thing that we don't recycle on property is the wrapping that comes around something that would come from a, a manufacturer such as spaghetti sauce or something that would come. Everything else, including all the metals, cardboard, all the food gets separated in the restaurant, goes through the digester. Everything that gets trimmed on the golf course goes through the digester. Um, and we do all this. Uh, we produce 10 cubic yards of compost a week. And if you can imagine doing that right in the middle of the city of Boca, uh, it's, it's quite a challenge. Up next, we meet an instructor whose last three students who qualified for the U.S. Open have made the cut. Sean Hester, the Director of Instruction at TPC Boston. Welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Foreman. Sean Hester is one of the most highly regarded teachers in the United States. We spoke with Sean to discuss what makes a good instructor. I think a good teaching professional has an innate sense of people and their personalities and their styles. And a good teaching professional is able to adapt to different personalities and different styles. What I'm really trying to do with my student is understand what they're thinking of, what they're trying to do in the golf swing, and I'm trying to impact that 
So I'm making sure they're thinking thoughts that are going to be constructive in their development. My teaching method is very individualized. The first thing I'm trying to do with higher handicapped players is make them aware of what they are currently doing. I'm not necessarily trying to change their golf swing or change anything that they're doing. I just want to make them aware first of what they actually are doing, and then we take it from there. Teaching is different from high handicappers to tour players in the sense that high handicappers have a very low awareness of what is happening. So I often ask players, you know, where did the ball hit the face? one, two, or three, meaning inside the middle of the face or on the toe. And higher handicapped players initially have no idea sometimes where the ball's hitting the face. So with a tour player, an accomplished player, they know exactly where the ball's hitting on the face, and the tour player has a, a very high level of awareness of where the club is, where the body is, and they can tell you a lot more. With a higher handicapped player, you're really trying to educate them and make them more aware of what's actually happening. Sean's students include Matt Parziali, PGA Tour player Rob Oppenheim, and PGA Tour Champions players Fran Quinn and Marco Dawson. Well, thank you for joining us on Golf Destination. Remember, the conversation never stops on our social media pages. Visit us at golfdestination.tv, and there you'll find links to our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can always watch past episodes on youtube.com slash golfdestination, and remember to season pass our show so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Meredith Gorman, and we'll see you next time on Golf Destination. Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, The Preserve at Boulder Hills, Club and Residences, New England's most amenity-rich Four Seasons lifestyle community. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.